Hey guys, what's up? Aru. Finishing both Kusanali questline and all of the RNR questline, I realized that I never thought I could cry so many times because of a damn plan. And please read the RNR story because this is how you find out how the story ends or at least appreciate how Hoyo put so much lore into Sumeru. I initially wanted to make a multiple theory video but now this video is gonna focus on what's going on with the Academia, Dreams, and Kusanali. This will give you guys my breakdown on why the Academia is going to destroy Sumeru and not Dottore, why Dreams and Aranara are the key to Sumeru's survival, and why it's paramount that Kusanali finds Rokadevara's memories ASAP. If there's something missing from each of those theories, then I'll be the first to say I am deeply sorry because Aranara lore is, in essence, a huge lore dump that may need viewers to play all the Aranara questline that even I would need to take a few times to read because of how they spread it so thinly in 3.0. Timestamps for each branching category will be in the comments and description. So let's get started. An Aranara once said, before becoming the new Ashvata tree, as long as it connects us, we can support you when you are in need. Lend you strength to conquer nightmares, help you through dark days, and fill the void in your heart. There are those who no longer dream and thus cannot see us. Those who have accepted fate and stopped searching forward, wallowing in fear and pain. Their hearts have hardened, unable to get help from us flowers. Now keep those words that I've just said in your mind as we go through the entire theory. It's weird, I know, starting with Dottore, but to find the root of the problem, we need to see it in the eyes of the one who wants to cause the problem. Easy enough, right? But Dottore is not the culprit of our problem. He, theoretically, is someone just following a trail. It's a running fact that Dottore wishes to do some arson in the land of wisdom, and Kali dreaming of this event is what started that theory. Kusanali right now can only be found through dreams, and based on what we know, can interact with mortals and basically recreate a reality for the person she chooses. Nilo, before her dance of flowers, put together with the book Folio of Foliage, mentions that the first sage found the lesser Kusanali at the same place where the greater lord Ruka Devata quote unquote disappeared, and that the Dendro Archon, whoever the Dendro Archon was, gave the first sage all the knowledge in the world. Whether or not it was Ruka Devata or Kusanali that contacted the first sage, it's possible that either one of the two did the same thing for Kali in her dream. A vision that the sage went to Kusanali and saved Sumeru could be the same as Kali's vision to save the Ermin Soul Tree in the Harbinger trailer. This is what we can tell regarding what might happen in 3.1 based on what we found in the Archon quest. But after going through Aranara's story, burning Erminsol and quite possibly ruining Sumeru is just one part of what Dottore wants. As the doctor or med scientist, he was mentioned quite a few times in the Aranara questline and in the artifact set Deep Wood Memories, specifically the goblet A Time of Insight. Now this is where the entirety of this theory starts and how I think they all go together. First, A Time of Insight says that the Lord of the Forest was immortal and that once they reach life's end, everything they are would then become the environment. The metals, the wood, the sky, the water, and even the moon. Now, another thing that I want to put in your mind is that Kusanali specifically said that she was just the moon. All things that die will gain a new life in another form, but the memories are what go away. And it also states that the only way for someone to remember something they forgot is to be reminded by using someone else. This then leads us to three people and three spirits, which are probably Aranara, to remind each other what they had forgotten. This is then followed by the records and conjectures left behind by the quote-unquote mad scientist saying that dreams had to be captured along with the inhabitants of the forest, or Aranara, who control dreams. And oddly, it ends with the statement to remind that friend of one's own form and the memories that were shared. Now, if the Tori is trying to remind a certain person of something they have forgotten, and if we base it off the fact that anyone who dies are reborn but forget their memory, we could assume that Dottore or someone else is capturing Aranara to control dreams and remind someone of their memories. Now the only person I could think of who is reborn that is important to the story is Kusanali. 
Now, assuming Ruka de Vada is Kusanali is kind of a stretch, but it's possible that Kusanali could at least carry Ruka de Vada's legacy and therefore maybe try to find Ruka de Vada's memory based on how Aranara can pass on forgotten memories to each other by means of song and seeds as well as being reminded to by their friends. Or maybe Dodore is trying to get someone else's memories. That being the sages, an Aranara friend that we don't know about yet, a specific person in the Fatui, or he's aiming for something in the desert. But the fact that Dodore is after dreams and Aranara are clear in the artifact piece and is even more elaborated in the Aranara questline. Trofin Snez Oh my gosh, Snezhevich, there you go, who was a Fatui spy sent by Arlecchino, and yes, Arlecchino is also doing some suspicious things in Sumeru, tells you about the Tori's plans, saying that a certain doctor has been busy luring children into the forest and trying to get their hands on Aranara. This is so that he can use the Aranara for his study regarding the connections between dreams, the withering, and the Aranara itself. This is only one of his many projects, however. Trofin also oddly mentions that he and every defeated Fatui member is a quote-unquote source of his study. Now, it doesn't really elaborate what he does with the source of his study, but yeah, now you know. Finally, a ragged record mentioning experimentations that used test subjects and put them through the withering, like non-vision holders, like go straight into the withering, stating that controllable dreams have huge potential for civil and military implications. Interestingly though, it mentions more than just weaponizing dreams. The record also speaks of elevating human intelligence to a whole new level, opening the possibility to conquer both reality and dream and truly transcend the earthly boundaries quote-unquote we are born with. If we assume that Dottori himself is the one who wrote these experiments, then that means that he is on the hunt for Aranara and dreams, and is using it for his studies in weaponizing dreams itself and the withering. But the Dendro Goblet, a time of insight, speaks of three individuals and three spirits that are not wholly forgotten, meaning that the three individuals that didn't completely forget the three spirits or vice versa. Whoever these three people are, one of them is either Dottore or all three of them are part of Sumeru, who all had Aranara friends. Interestingly enough, the Aranara questline also had three old individuals with three Aranara friends who may or may not have forgotten each other, namely Irfan, Siman, and Kayam. I mean, that's how he wanted you to say it. And the three spirits, or Aranara, Aragaru, Aranakin, and Aranaga. Kayam specifically was a scholar of Tawahist or astrology, but this quest didn't really give me much info about dreams and capturing Aranara. At the end, I was only met with another sad end and tokens of their memory. But the fact that Kayam was a scholar raises questions that aren't related to the Fatui, but could also reveal another possible culprit. Which moves me into the next discussion, the Academia. The Academia from what we know are basically both the main governing group of Sumeru as well as the most prestigious academic institute in all of Teyvat that we know of so far, with multiple branches of studies, affiliations, and membering groups within. Now I want you to listen to the set of lines every time we start a new day in Sumeru City within the Archon Quest. All connections have been secured to construct the most stable framework possible. The project has entered its most critical phase. Power has begun to flow from... Observing a modest drop in the output of Nyana energy, but values still remain within normal parameters. Continue to monitor the variances in the data, and find the cause as soon as possible. Traveler! Did you hear that? I heard it too. Our ears aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but it sounded like it was coming from inside my head. We took off our Akasha terminals. Phase runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But we cannot lose all of our progress. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. 
One of the voices we heard, starting from the second beep, sounded like the same guy who voiced the great sage who stopped the Sub-Zero's festival. From the few lines, we could tell the sages are quite busy with what I assume as testing and experimenting on the dreams and simulations they are working on. But whether or not the academia are also trying to possibly make civil and military use of dreams and maybe even Aranara, we don't exactly know. What we do know is that they at least did all this experimentation and testing without the knowledge of Nahida, which means that many more of their experiments went unnoticed as well, which I theorize includes the study of ley lines and harboring it to exceedingly dangerous levels. We've seen quite clearly in Tenari's character quest that large amounts of unregulated elemental energy can cause what's called a contaminated region. Albeit the academia banned the study of mechanical life forms, they didn't ban the study of elemental energies and its application, which is part of the Spantamad branch of the academia. Represented by what looks like a red peacock with seven feathers, representing the seven elements, and a tree branch that represents the Ermansol tree. But before we talk about Ermansol and ley lines, as well as their relation to the academia and dreams, let's start with our favorite pet, Karkata. What's weird is that ley lines and ruined constructs are the last thing that I thought would go together. Or maybe I'm just dumb. You would think ruined constructs should go in the Sharawar branch, like old ruined golems studied by Jazari and Pir Kavikavus. Ruined machines and ruined constructs in general are powered by their various chaos apparatuses. Apparently, ruined constructs seem to be powered by elemental energy, which is found in their chaos storages and modules which drop from chaos drakes. Many of the ruined constructs we have already seen all possess some sort of cylindrical structure located on or inside of their body. At some point, we might see more Karkatas in the future, especially since Karkata is in the hands of Tinari, who isn't under the academia currently. But that would mean that ruined constructs use elemental energy to be powered, and that ley lines are what the civilization that used them might have had. And you know what else was powered by ley lines? The Akasha system, as if we didn't know that already though. Created by Ruka Devara herself and was quote-unquote expanded on by the academia after her death. And when I say expanded on, I mean that they added their own flavors. The Academia created the headsets that you see called the Akasha Terminal, which isn't the Akasha itself. Remember, the Akasha is the treasure trove of knowledge which was created by Ruka Devata. And the Akasha Terminal is an invention of the Academia after studying the Akasha itself. Understand? Now you know which is whose creation. Now I'm not up to times with who's doing what with which ley line, but as far as everyone in Genshin knows, Ermansol is related to ley lines, ley lines have elemental energy, Ermansol is also related to dreams, the Akasha system is related to Ruka Devata and Kusanali, and not the Academia. And everything about the Akasha, Dreams, and the Academia have been revealed already in the Archon story. Everyone in Sumeru can and should be able to dream. It's just that the Akasha system and the Academia have been harvesting dreams for either information, power, or as simulations for whatever they are trying to achieve. So the Academia basically has been messing with the Akasha system under the term expanded on by using everyone's dreams. But Ley Lines and Ermansol aren't part of this dilemma. At least, not yet. Remember Marana's avatar? Yeah, well it's basically the embodiment of death of all things. Based on what Arama said, Marana also means withering and Marana means death. Basically, withering is death and Marana's avatar is memories of death incarnate, as stated by Arama herself. To me, the academia has been altering how the Akasha system works by using Akasha terminals and the Akasha itself self after expanding upon it and making it harvest dreams, which isn't part of the stock version that Ruka Devata and Kusanali know of. And the thing being affected by the academia tampering with the Akasha eating people's dreams is, you guessed it, the Ermansol tree. Not just that, the people of Sumeru can't see the Aranara because they can't dream anymore. And after 500 years, they don't know that the Aranara are basically equivalent of both the Dendro Archon herself as well as what the Akasha is doing. Which is, as a matter of fact, storing everyone's knowledge. Unless storing copious amounts of it is not part of the Akasha's initial system. 
Now let's go back to the Tori and the Time of Insight. People who die become the Earth, and people's memories and maybe their dreams are a void. Theoretically, I want to make this void into something tangible, and I want to think it's elemental energy. Now having said that, the Akasha system is being tampered with, a Gnosis-powered system which if anything should have some form of elemental energy. The Academia is tampering with a Gnosis-powered item that is correlated to dreams. Some dreams correlate to the Ermin Soul Tree and the remaining consciousness of Ruka Devata. Dreams are what connect Sumeru with Aranara and therefore the Dendro Archon Kusanali and maybe the Ruka Devata. But the people of Sumeru don't dream and the Academia is the one responsible for that. Now try to put together everything that I'm going to say. The Ermin Soul Tree is related to Ley Lines, the Withering or Marana is some form of death and its memory is the reason that it's coming back. Memories and dreams to Aranara are somewhat interchangeable because Aranara don't really dream. They hibernate while thinking of their memories and compress it into a seed and they essentially just reborn with their memories somewhat condensed. The Academia on the other hand is obsessed with the death of Ruka Devata and almost deny Kusanali's existence. They see Kusanali as a sign that Ruka Devada died. The human soul is sick because of some form of contaminated consciousness, a memory that is being stored within the tree. Now, do you see where I'm trying to go with this? TLDR, the Academia is responsible for tampering with the Akasha, therefore dreams, therefore the Ermin Sol being sick, and therefore the root of all ley lines, and the appearance of Marana, or withering, which is the memory of death. And it's the Academia's obsession with Ruka Devara and their past that they can't see what the future holds. Too caught up with their memories that they don't see the god they believed in anymore. Now remember the quote that Arama said? Well, if you don't, then you might want to go back to the first part of the video and remember that along with what Arana mentions about memories and friends. Friends are more precious than memories. You can make up for lost memories, but not a lost friend. All of the things that I've said is still a theory that the Academia is responsible for the withering phenomena within Sumeru. But what we really don't know here is that if the Academia know that they are responsible for removing dreams, which is the basis of all wisdom and knowledge as elaborated by Kusanali herself. Because the Academia actually want to help the Ermin Soul Tree. They wanted to get Tinari back into the Academia even though he was protecting Avidya village, but they also said that they need him to find a cure for the Ermin Soul being sick. So you see how they kind of contradict themselves here? They're using the dreams of people but apparently they have a problem with the Ermin Soul Tree being sick. And at the same time, they care for Sumeru as well as their Archon but for some reason deny the existence of Kusanali. So does the Academia know that the Akasha being altered to consume dreams hinder their ability to see Aranara as well as well, possibly hurting the Ermin Soul Tree and could deny the existence of Kusanali as well as being stuck in the past with the death of Ruka Devata be the reason for the contaminated consciousness of the Ermin Soul or are they after something else and curing the Ermin Soul is just a small step to solving a bigger problem. Finally, we have Kusanali. Remember when I said that Kusanali is Teresa and Ruka Devata is Kalen? Well, that's still kind of plausible, but what we found out about Aranara's being nearly immortal and storing memories through seeds along with insight from the Dendro Goblet being that people's memories are a void which I assume become elemental energy, well then maybe Kusanali is basically the same as Ruka Devata but she just doesn't remember it. After all, Aranara are the closest relation to the Dendro Archon and when Aranara are in danger, they hibernate and become seeds of memories. Lastly, the excerpt from A Time of Insight requiring someone to remind another to remember their memories. So if you put two and two together, Kusanali could be a seed and just needs to be remembered as well as needing to be reminded by. It's visible from Kusanali's dialogue that she doesn't really have the experience and knowledge on how to be a good Archon. Kusanali can't really be the entity to contact the first sage and grant him all the knowledge in the world either. Because Kusanali herself, even at the age of 500, states that the Academia is doing a better job than she is. If she knows everything, then she wouldn't really need to pass on that knowledge to the sage in the first place. The RNR in their lore are known to store memories within the environment, and they forget memories worth as many millennia as they can gain. And it's all within the trees and the soil. The end of the Aranyaho quest, which is basically the Aranara quest, says that 
in the end, the forest will remember. The forest will remember, not the Akasha. So this, I think, is the same with how Kusanali and Ruka Devata is. Now, if we're talking about a forest and not just the Akasha system, what kind of entity do you think could remember Ruka Devata's memories? That is right, the urban soul tree. The same way Arama gave herself to become the new Ashvata tree, maybe Ruka Devata did the same and became part of urban soul. The book Folio of Foliage states that she sacrificed herself to save the rainforest, or whatever else she did that requires her to sacrifice herself. When Ruka Devata fell in the cataclysm, the first sage went out to look for the Dendro Archon to prevent the calamity. But lo and behold, the first sage at the time was presented with a dream where he was visited by the Dendro Archon, which I think is Ruka Devata, and was given all the knowledge in the world. This took him a long time to understand, of course, but when he wanted to go home, he woke up from his dream, realized where the Dendro Archon was, but didn't know that it was the lesser lord Kusanali, Nahida. And Nilo started dancing and we saw Dunyarzad and... <laughs> <sighs> hey, come on, you guys cried too, you know. Don't lie to me. But yes, if knowledge can be passed down through the forest by means of dreams and memories, then maybe Kusanali just needs to dream a little or at least find what the greater lord Ruka Devara is hiding in the forest. Similar to how A found out how to further her search for eternity, maybe in 3.1 will help Kusanali do a bit of soul searching, quite literally, to get in touch with Ruka Devara and find the entirety of what she said when we heard the lines. This would then save the Academia from being stubborn because of her death and save Sumeru entirely from their own demise that they seem to have created themselves. And there you go, Aranyaka lore plus Kusanali lore made into a theory for what may come in the next patch. Oh man, that was a lot of lore to take in and then some. Honestly, with so much info we have right now, we can only believe what Kusanali said and expect that we will try to decipher Ruka Devara's final message and the fact Catherine is a robot from Sneznaya. Regarding what we're gonna do, however, and who the culprit is, it can basically be anyone, but I really do feel a bit of of hubris and a bit of too much of being proud from the academia, especially since they harvest dreams even though dreaming is part of gaining wisdom. Wisdom, okay, and not knowledge. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed the first post 3.0 update theory. As always, do throw your opinions on what might happen and how things will go based on what we know so far as well as maybe a few ideas on what kind of theory you would want me to do. And if you want to see more of my content, do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to stay updated on my channel. There's gonna be more coming and I'll basically be crossing out all the new theories about 3.0 until I run out. I just finished all the quests in Sumeru that I could find and oh boy, I'm excited for the Eremites, not the Scarlet King but the Eremites themselves as well as the old world and what they can basically do. So yeah, do wait for all those. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and if you want to support your boy, go check out my other socials, I'll link down below and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video yeah like comment if you enjoyed subscribe for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists bye